Hey, hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Shasti. Here we talk about entertainment, celebrities, um, TV shows, movies, makeup, and kind of anything else that garners my attention this week. And today, we will be talking about white allies and the Black Lives Matter movement and how I feel about that, my thoughts and opinions. This video topic actually comes from someone who commented this under one of my posts, I think last week, under one of my videos last week. And they asked me my opinions and feelings because this topic, it garners a lot of feelings from me. Some good, some bad, some frustration. Just, it makes me feel a lot, and which is another reason why I really want to do this topic because I feel something and I feel like that's important for everybody else. Because, also, this is the holiday season. The, the day this should be out is on Christmas. And I feel like a lot of white allies when they're around their families don't do what they're supposed to do. And we're going to get into that. Oh, we're going to get into that very, very quickly. But I do personally feel like white people have a place in the Black Lives Matter movement because we need you. I, I feel like we, we're all aware of the fact that as black and brown people, we need white people's help in order to get things to happen. Because unfortunately, the people at the top are white and no one at the top wants to hear what we're going through out of our mouths. It sucks, it is unfair, we are the ones living it, we are the ones experiencing it, and our voices should be important, but it's not. My voice is minimized because I'm a black woman. I am of a darker skin tone. Don't let the lighting fool you. I'm not as beige as some of my, some of the lighting and some of my views might try to fool you to be. I'm just real yellow. But because I am a darker skin black woman, I'm automatically angry. My opinions and my criticisms are not valid anymore because coming from a place of emotion, which one, I don't personally, I don't see the issue with being emotional, emotionally invested in something, especially when you live it. You're asking me to devoid myself of all feelings because it's just, it's just, I don't like this idea that being emotional is a bad thing because it's not. As much as I feel like there's a time and place for emotions, it's still, you're so human. You're allowed to be riled up about things. But again, we need white people to kind of speak, not speak for us. The issue is not speaking for us. It is relaying what we are going through and we are saying to other white people because we as black people cannot reach them. I will, it does not matter what we say. Most white people are not receptive to hearing black and brown people's voices. We don't look like each other, so sympathy does not exist, it seems like. It seems like it's very hard for what for people who've never gone through it to be, again, sympathetic. Especially, I wanna say as Americans, Americans feeling and caring about other people is not how we're raised. As you can see how bad COVID looks because don't nobody care about the next person. That's the biggest thing about COVID is not just caring about yourself, but caring about the people you will eventually run into no cares, no feelings, none of that. So again, white people do have a place in the Black Lives Matter movement. You need to be marching in front of us to protect us. Your job truly is to protect the marginalized people around you. Because at the end of the day, the abuse that black and brown people go through in this country trying to peacefully fight for our rights is, is fucking crazy. It's the way I've seen especially after the protests from this this year, seeing white people full on riot, burn down cities, and cops deal with them so nicely. While they have a Molotov cocktail in one hand, rifles in the other, and they're nicely arrested. And I've seen black women, black men, with no weapons, not screaming at the police, peacefully protesting, being assaulted. So it's very much so important that we have white allies on our side to in order to protect us so we can speak. We need your protection so our voices can be heard. Now, while white people do have a place in movements like this, the co-opting needs to stop. There's a problem when the Black Lives Matter movement is about you and your followers and how you're losing followers because you're tweeting about Black Lives Matter. Okay, that's great, but black people losing their lives. Black people are marching and doing what they're fucking supposed to do and they are dying. 
and you're worried about losing followers are you are you fucking serious do you think that's how i know this doesn't truly matter to you because you losing followers while black people are dying should be the last thing on your mind so what if you lost a few fo you got a couple of racist followers now they're gone congratulations but that this is not about you this is about the black and brown people who are suffering in this country and for you to tweet about yourselves also oh my god do you guys remember there was a time where like white women and white men were like half naked on the gram and it was like now they have your attention go sign these petitions what is wrong with you people there's something like actually like deranged and wrong with you if you think that's what we need right now i don't want to while fighting for my life do you think i want to see white bodies do you really think i want to look at naked white women again this is not it is this weird thing that white people just can't seem to understand that they're not center for tension how how are we making a movement about the lives of black people and it's about you white woman are you and people were trying to defend it like but now people are looking and it's like <sighs> did black the question is did a black person actually do that no no they didn't so why'd you do it we weren't asking y'all to do that so why was it happening that was a terrible time in history i won't remember this all you white women that did that y'all on my hit list i'm Ooh, listen, the, the superhero, the superpowers kicked in the 21st and I have a list. I have a list of white women I need to talk to because that was stupid. That was gross and it was weird. And again, making it all about you. Making it all about you. Y'all need to cut that out. Another thing is white people kind of like attacking on the behalf of black and brown people. Y'all need to cut that out. Y'all need to stop being mad for us. Unless you've seen an abundance of black people say that something is bothersome to them then y'all come in mass hordes but the issue is y'all go in you you because again you don't know what it's like to be black so you're all do so you're doing this with like a half-baked idea of what's going on and being like oh this feels offensive but it's like feels offensive to who you're not black you're not brown how do you know this is offensive and so then white people will attack and then some mind you just looking at the replies you will see only white people but somehow it's brought back to black lives matter and now black people are so sensitive and black people this black people that when we had no idea what was happening i think the the best example of this is like when all like the cartoon characters who were black were voiced by non-black people that whole thing happened and like um a lot of characters changed their voices me personally especially like i think the first major one was like with cleveland brown i just want to say one thing no black person thinks about the important black animated characters in history and thinks of Cleveland Brown. Cleveland Brown don't even reach top 100 of impactful black cartoon characters. My brain has never put Cleveland Brown, a man this color, as black. I, no black person thinks of Cleveland Brown as a black. I've never have. Most black people don't. That, that whole situation was so unnecessary. And then somehow white again this was white people saying this because no black person has ever cared about cleveland brown not a singular one also who's watching the family guy besides back besides for background noise like so that whole situation happened and then it got it was white people who are really pushing this and somehow black people got blamed for it because it was allies doing too fucking much it was white allies with, I guess, good intentions. I don't know. I guess. And then somehow it's pushed on black people in the Black Lives Matter movement. And there's so many more important things black people should be caring about. But you're caring about anime characters. When we weren't the ones that started this. 
And this is a consistent thing that happens, that white allies take it upon themselves to be angry. While no black person has said a thing. And then somehow it is the black people, it's black people's fault. It's black people are super sensitive and black people are worried about the wrong things. And it's like, we didn't even know, we didn't care. I could have given two shits. Again, Cleveland Brown, um, whatever, what was it, Missy and Big Mouth, all of them could stay white voices. I don't care. Those characters are not, in my opinion, black representation. They're not. Missy's not Cleveland Brown's not. And most of the other anime characters that got changed are not black representation to me and to most of the black people. Another issue is a lot of white allies, the allyship starts and ends on Twitter. That's all it is. Those sweet links, the, you know, this is you people all day long. But then when it, and they log off of Twitter and then they're around their families and they're allowing their relatives to say the n-word they're allowing their relatives to talk bad about people of color to be xenophobic to be islamophobic to be racist to be all these types of things but you'll get on twitter and you'll drag people celebrities and so forth and, and tiktokers all that thing but y'all are not holding your own families accountable and that's truly where we need you guys because I'm not running in to these white celebrities and TikTokers every day. I'm running into your aunts and your racist uncles. That is who your average black person is interacting with. Like, is it important for the people up top to be held accountable and, you know, for laws and things like that? Like, all, like, all of that is important. But so is checking y'all's families. Like, it's actually crazy to me how racist some of y'all families are. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about like teenagers who have to, who are allies themselves. There's only so much you can do as a child. Your voice is not heard. But some of y'all are fully grown adults. Allowing your relatives to be racist. Allowing them just to do all these horrible shit. And you're not checking them. You're not constantly on their necks. And these are the people who are asking black people if they live there who are asking people asking black people are you sure like you belong here like these are the people that black people are interacting with every day at walmart every day at whole foods and bullshit like that like those are the people i have to deal with every day those are your aunts your uncles your moms your dads and y'all are being allies online but not allies in real life where it matters i need you to check your relatives you're no one in your family should feel like should feel comfortable talking about people of color that way and not feel like they're going to get checked that is super important that when you are around your families you say something because it doesn't matter all you're doing with social media if your family is still like this if your family is still full of hate and they're full of disgusting people because then they're going to raise then your nieces and nephews and your younger cousins to be the exact same way this cycle needs to end and it is help it's, it's taking your nieces and nephews aside and explain to them what their parents are saying is wrong. But how it's gross and disgusting to talk about and treat other human beings like that. You have to do something in your families. Because again, being on social media and dragging people is great. But what are you doing in real life? What are you doing when you're logging off the tour? Because again, most of Twitter is not Americans. Even though everyone for some reason tweets in English. Like, there's a lot of people who are, like, from non-English speaking countries, but they speak English on Twitter. So, you're interacting with a lot of people who are not American. So, it doesn't matter how much you drag them, because they don't live here. But it is important that y'all speak to your families, and y'all don't want to. Come the holiday season, it's lips are shut. While your, your relatives are saying horrible things about other people. Because, again allies this is not about you your job is to uplift the voices of those in these communities that desperately need it the people who are going through it who are living it and whose voices are drowned out because of the color of their skin because nobody cares nobody cares what a black girl has to say unless it comes out the, the mouth of a white person and that's what you're supposed to you're supposed to be able to get into because again white allies have the ability to be in white spaces. You have the ability 
to really be in front of other white people and explain to them what is wrong. And they are so receptive to hearing it out of your mouth than for hearing it out of my mouth. That is what you're supposed to be doing. This movement is not about you. It's not about your followers. It's not about your body. It's not about anything to do with you. You are here because you are aware of what going, what's going on is wrong and you want these people to be heard. So no way, shape, or form should this be about you. And I know that seems unfair. That's life. Life's unfair. People are dying. I'm terrified of the idea of having children one day. Because I know once they leave my home and they're in that world, anything can happen to them. And it does not matter how much money and access I'll ever have. Because it will never be enough. Because my children will be black first. I will be black first. Nothing else matters when you, when you have this. Money and access don't fucking matter. And so you, as someone who does not look like me, but is aware that what is happening is wrong, you need to be silent and listen. When we say something, and we have an issue with something, and we want to protest something, then you be right there. Don't take the initiative yourself. Don't do that. Because then you harp on the most non-consequential, unimportant things. And then we get the backlash and we get the hate and the issue is black people all over again but we've done nothing and again maybe i think the i think it's what is the saying like the road to good attention is paved with something i don't know something like that but it's just like yes thank you for the good intention but again if black people are not upset you don't need to be upset we don't care about cartoon characters i have bigger fish to fry than cleveland brown he can stay white voice i don't Y'all can have him. But it's important to listen to us. Please do that, you know? But again, I am not saying that you don't belong in the movement. Because we do. We need each other. We do. We can't really make shit shake the way we need to if it's just us. Because again, white people don't care when it comes out of our mouths. But it comes out of your mouth, they'll listen. So it's just like practice being good ally and there's nothing wrong with fucking up as an ally you're not perfect you are a person but it's being receptive to the communities and understanding when you've messed up and you correct the behavior and again please speak to y'all's families because that's the thing y'all all social justice warriors on twitter and then grandma said an n-word and it's just like <laughs> grandma crazy grandma oh no you say something okay so that's it that's the end of my video i just i didn't want to talk too too long because i do have a video kind of on this topic about why allies called candace owens is trash for sure white allies if you want to hear a little bit more how i feel about my allies i just feel like i end up rehashing a lot of the notes in that video in this one so i tried not to do that but i'll definitely link that video in my description because that's also a really good video about the place in which white allies feel like it's comfortable being racist to a conservative black people and how that's a very slippery slope and the moment that we disagree with you you're gonna be racist to us too but yeah i that's pretty much it for my video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next one bye guys